All right, hello and welcome. We are on Zero to Hero Season 3, Week 1, with a new Zero member um, who is actually not even from the U.S. So why don't you introduce yourself to us? Who are you? Uh, I'm Bez. I'm from Scotland. Originally the only solo main Ace Climbers player in Scotland and recently changed over to Fox. Started playing four months ago. Uh, just on the tail end of my fourth month, uh, played Aces for three and a half of that. Just started uh, Fox and looking to get cracking. Nice. I love the accent, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, I've been getting a, a lot of uh, stray comments that no one's going to understand me. <laughs> well, we'll do our best. And how did you get into melee? Uh. It's actually a relatively long story, but to cut it short, I'd started in 2002. Um, I didn't actually own a setup myself. I only played at a friend's house. Um, I loved the game, but other games took precedence over it. We played Halo, gone to others. Uh, further down the line, I'd, uh, I think it was Smash 4 for 3DS came out. So I tried that. Didn't really like it, but I did attend a tournament. After attending that tournament, about a year later, I found a Facebook group, being my local scene, and after finding that they had a bi-weekly tournament, I attended one, and I've been there since. That was this October. Very nice. And that's why we have to be nice to all the community, right? Because uh, you came from Smash 4, and that's really cool. Well, I, I say I came from Smash 4, I've played a total of 20 minutes tops, <laughs> okay. all of which being the, the 3DS uh, tournament that I attended before it was released to you. Hmm. Okay, that's a very cool. That's awesome that um, you, you joined. How is the Scotland um, scene, by the way? What's the local scene like? It's progressing well. We have uh, bi-weekly, every second Thursday, uh, friendlies every Friday. Average attendance is anywhere between uh, 8 and 25 at friendlies and upwards of 15 for the bi-weekly tournaments. We have a monthly tournament, which I've immediately got myself on the staff for. I wanted to help out as much as I can and try and grow the scene. And so we've got a, a council, if you will, of people that we consult, try and improve our events, make it a a more exciting or even just standard quality improvement taking that and make it the best we can very nice okay that's awesome it's awesome to see um, other scenes grow and that's really cool that you guys have a friendly day too so for, yeah. week, so for week one you sent some videos in and based on what I've watched and what I've observed um, I want to discuss the following so I want to talk about movement and why it's important and then some practice drills that you can go over and then like just having a good practice regimen for you because um, I'm not physically present for you but because this is such an early stage for you in your career the most rapid like the most rapid growth you can get is by investing in your movement especially as a fox main because um, yeah you know when you play other characters like Marth, Peach, and Sheik although like movement is important for everybody it's even more for Fox because, as you probably know, like if you mess up, um, you will be screwed over. Yeah, definitely. And so we don't want down smash to happen because you missed an L cancel or, or for you to get shield grab. Those are like yeah. probably the most common things that happen. And so let's uh, talk about some drills. So it's foresight, I believe. So there are four things. So one thing that I've noticed just from watching your videos, and I'll point this out to you, is that after you do an aerial, um, you tend to stop. Whether it's you holding shield, or you, for one reason or another, just getting stuck. I can't, yeah. And I can't tell if it's because you missed an L cancel or you're just not moving at the most like at the earliest available frame. So I just wanted to just talk about some drills that can help you out. Um, so do you know what the force so you um, what kind of equipment do you have at home uh, I have a uh, bit of a luxury I have 20XX uh, Sony Trinitron get access to play on a lagless monitor or anything that I could 
sweets I can get. Okay, dang, you have like it all. So there's like different things that different players like. Actually, let me. So sorry, there are different things that different people can do, um, based on the resources. So, um. Do you know what the Norwalk practice is? I can switch views and turn on a GameCube to show you what that is. I'm not familiar with it. Okay, so this is something that Lucky shows a lot on his stream. I'm talking away from the mic. Sorry about that. I'm I just realized I was talking away from the mic. So let me set up my GameCube, actually. I didn't think I was actually going to do this. We're gonna inception this. Can you at least see that overlay? Yeah, I can. You can see the gameplay. Let me turn off the mic. So you can do this many ways. There's a 20xx tutorial too. Uh, so one thing that uh, the 20 uh, Lucky and Mango used to do a lot, and Lucky goes over this in his stream, and I find this to be helpful, is uh, go. I'm not on my best controller, so it's gonna be kind of bad. And you go to four side. Um, and then, so like, just practice that, um, I can't even do it at all. So one thing that Lucky likes to do is a lot of the drill shine stuff. Okay. And you can keep track with it in second hits. Yeah. And um, it's just to get you comfortable with like the shine timings, the um, the L cancel, and just being able to jump and short hop. Um, and a couple times I've gone like over a hundred before. And so let's say like the goal here for you, if you want to write it down, is to try to get at least like 50 consistently of the drill. And so this should help build up your... Um, this should help build up your L canceling, your shines, and being able to jump out of shines. Um, because some of the more complicated fox maneuvers, like doing wave shine or doing aerial shine aerial, are like a, are derived from this. So that's one thing that you can do. Um, and another thing, this is like the S2J practice, and this is playing three ice climbers on level one. Yeah, points two, three, and four. I'm already and have been using and still currently using. Okay, cool. So I don't have to bring up the examples. So yeah, um, this is like the most important thing, and it's like practicing dribbling or basketball or whatever, like, whatever like the most fundamental thing and whatever you want to learn. Um, and I reckon, I, I think I'm gonna harp this on you. It's just that like you have to like practice this at this point in the game because you're so early, like at least like 30 minutes a day of just like yeah. tech skill. Yeah. Um, so our homework goals by like the next time we meet um what i really want to see actually this may not be realistic but we're going to set goals is stop sh um see if we can help you not shield after aerials so like bad l cancels and stop getting stuck in general on platforms and when you land is uh, I what i was going to say is i've actually uh, made uh, an adjustment to uh, improve this quite significantly. Previously, I was using the shoulder buttons of a Smash 4 controller, which has the lock, so it doesn't push down easily. Yeah. I've swapped that out for a Generation 1 controller, so now I can... It, using the L-canceling is a lot easier because I can do the light press and not hit the digital for the GameCube controller, just using the analog, and I've found that much easier and uh, starting to make progress already. So I'm glad to see that that was points. Okay, that's that's awesome. Yeah, when you have a stiff controller, it's really hard, and you know that more than I do. Um, that's yeah. why I always buy controllers that are already broken in <laughs> from people. Um, I don't yeah, I'm, like I'm looking to get a Kidano. I did take notes on the the requirements that you'd set up on yours on the list, so I'm going to look to get one of those as soon as possible. Yeah, but they're sick. So these are these are like the two main things. It's like so I'm like, do you know how in boxing, like if you're new, like you may just do like one punch and then that's it. What like we want to develop is like a flow where you can do like 
left punch, right punch, uppercut, and like get a flow of movement as opposed to like having doing one thing and then stop, and then doing one thing and then stop. Yeah, uh, it's one of the things I've noticed in the videos after after playing it. Don't notice it, but in hindsight, you can see that everything is choppy and they're just easy, easily predict. Yeah. And so that's why recording is like really helpful in general, because you start to notice those kind of things. Um, and so, why don't you get comfortable with this, where we, you know, just do the basic L canceling shuffle? Um, I want you to start thinking about like, okay, I do my aerial. Like, what can I do it after as some like movement drills? And so here are some ideas that you can kind of work with. And I'll add one more. So, aerial into dash, um, aerial into jab, aerial into another aerial, or aerial into like dash away. So once you get like really comfortable against the Bowser's, um, I like doing this a lot. And this is something you see in people's uh, practice routines. Why did I turn off melee? Never turn off melee. So. Oh, that's uh, Cardinal Sin. <laughs> yes. All right. Let me put this in your viewing area. So. Let's see. I like to put on a stage with platforms, actually, because that helps. And yeah, I, I, te I tend to cycle through them, but most of the time I spend my practice on uh, Yoshi's Battlefield. Okay, that's good. Uh, I like to use uh, large characters. We'll just do FD for now. So, if we're... I can't... This is like a random controller I found. So, like... Once you get like the basic, um, once you get like this, like probably like a good routine is just to practice like 20 of each. I should probably put on, let me put on a handicap. Um, what I like to do is like, okay, I'll mix in the, what I do after the aerial. So let me put on a handicap. So. I'll do this repeatedly, and then I'll start mixing it in. Dash away. Jab. Nair, air. Or Nair, back air. So, like, you have, like, fluid... I don't know if you play Street Fighter that much, but, like, fluid kind uh, of, like, strings, I guess, is the way to put it. Yeah. So, these are some things that I want you to practice, and you could do, for Ariel, just, like, Put Bowser on like 0.5 or do 20xx and see if you can do all this like really consistently. And even when you start getting good, like let's say you do it 9 times out of 10, like our goal is to get this like 10 out of 10 times. Because if you look on like top level play, like they can do like 100 um, good aerials, but that one gets them killed by our Armada. Yeah. And so that's really important. So do you have any questions about this? Uh no, not at present. I've I've started doing some of this stuff, but having it in a concrete format is a lot easier to follow. I've been it, it's probably bad practice, but I've been almost exclusively working on drill shine. I've been able to get to the point where nine times out of ten I will be able to drill shine and then wave dash out of it. The the stage I'm at just now, as far as working drill shine into the play, is that I can do it and friendlies pretty consistently like six out of ten times but i, I tend to mess up when it comes to play. so i think just getting from practice to friendlies and then to tournament okay but that then comes with getting 100 percent of the time all the time hmm. okay that's awesome i can't wait to see your next batch of um, videos then seems like you're making a lot of improvements um, and if you really want to get really technical, there are some like other things you can add. I like the aerial dash away. That's one of the ones that I want to be able to do but can't. Uh, what do you mean by that? Oh, just like oh, aerial into dash out. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's... Hmm. 
Well, uh, it, it's not difficult to execute. It's difficult to implement. I should say. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, and if you're really wanting to, um, if you're like really wanting to be technical, like aerial shine, turn around, wave dash. Yeah. So, like where you shine one way and then have to turn around the other because like the shine ended up pushing them back. So that's like a really tricky one that you can practice. Alrighty. Um, oh. Go ahead. Oh. Any challenge is welcome. Yeah, so um, Shine Turnaround is probably one of the trickiest ones because you have to, like, it's, it's slightly delayed timing, but it's it's important to learn. Um, yeah. And so what I really want to emphasize, and this is, like, a cardinal sin of people that don't have a lot of, like, good players to play against or people that just practice tech skill, is just remember that movement is not an endpoint to skill. Like, movement is supposed to add functionality to gameplay. Like, it's a tool. So you want to be like, yeah. okay, like, why is this important or where do I use it? And I want you to be proactive in thinking, like, so if we go back to this example of, like, aerial dash away, like, I, I do this in situations where, like, I do a good aerial, I dash away, and for me, I use that tool when I think they're going to shield grab me because it's like, oh, if I do it well enough and I dash away and then they try to shield grab, well, then they, they miss and then I can punish them. Yeah. Uh, um, so think about like where you can use these tools, um, and as you get more experience and as you play people more, you'll discover like which kind of things don't work and which things work better. And so here's another thing, and this is something that KK has taught taught me. It's just like walk run drills, and this is basically like just if you see a spot, um, can you hit that spot like without like there being any flubs? Does that make sense? Yeah, I'd seen something similar. I think uh, it's one of PewPew's videos. What, using the green circle in the center of Yoshi's, dashing within that, making sure every movement's deliberate, following uh, anything in the background. So making sure I stay in line with a shy guy, something like that. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. I didn't know that PewPew had a good video. And so the reason why this is important is because you're going to be hitting a moving target. Um, and by moving target, I mean that you're going to hit, like, a character, right, that's, like, constantly moving. He could be here, now, and then move right later. And so when you're, like, when you're dash dancing, too, you need to be able to say, like, let's say you're here right now in terms of space, and your your opponent's here, right? But you know they're going to fade back this way. You're going to need to know where exactly you dash and then overshoot your aerial. So you need to know, like, how to move to the exact spots you want and because that's a really important as Fox because the difference between hitting your spot and not is getting shield grabbed or getting grabbed and dying yeah does that make sense yeah so the that's easy, bad. so one way you could do it is like Kirby Kazi has a good blog also on movement is just like being able to like walk and run on command and like being able to hit your spots this is really 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 important um, so one thing you can do is just pick arbitrary points on the stage and just say like I want to dash dance between these two points or I want to hit this spot or I want to jump onto this platform and you want to be really deliberate with like one clean movement so if you're like jumping and then you miss or you overshoot it then you need to be uh, your movement needs to just be crisp and that's one thing you can practice does that make sense? yeah, yeah definitely it lines up with what I've been uh, looking to, to improve on. So, I've been. I'd say the. Just having it be deliberate is one of the key things. It's easy enough to just mess around. Yeah. So, um, what I want to emphasize is just practice what's important. That's the most important thing. Clean movements, shuffling are the two most important things that you could do right now. Shield drop and invincible ledge dashes are nice, but they should not be the emphasis at this point. So meaning that, yeah, practice it like when, like you can practice it a few minutes a day, but it's not gonna help you too much at this current point. Not to say that you shouldn't practice it, but your emphasis should be on the first two things. That's quite right. All right. Um, and then last thing, so I don't know, I forget what you mentioned about um, habits. Or, I mean, about who you play against. Uh, well, I've got access to pretty much anyone in Scotland. Most of the time, it is through friendlies on the Fridays. If not, almost all of us are using them regularly. It's not 
very good. It's good isn't it play, but it's good for getting a feel for reads, neutral, what I can do, when I can do it. Uh, try to keep as much of my practice to best uh, friendly sessions. On. Okay. So, here's like some things I want to emphasize here, because um, this question actually comes up for me a lot on my social media or just in private. Is like, like how do I practice with friends if they aren't very good? And so, um, if I asked you what 2 plus 2 was, what is that? 4. 4. And, and what if I just kept asking you the same question over and over, like 2 plus 2? It would be really, like, we have, we've established that you already know the proper answer. Yeah. And so, there might be an opponent, and, and different, the point being is that different people test different things. And if your opponent yeah. has, like, a very bad habit that you just pick on for an hour straight, it's the same thing as me asking you what 2 plus 2 is for an hour straight. It's like, you've already proven that you know how to counter that specific scenario. And if your opponent's, like, really predictable and that's all they're doing, and you just keep abusing it the same way, like, then you don't really learn much out of it. Uh, you're learning how to play a player instead of... Yeah. So... So I want to emphasize this. Like, if there is a habit that you're you are overly reliant on your opponent messing up, like let's say you get the same opening over and over again because they like to jump into you and get shield grim. Um, just as an investment for yourself, let your friends or partner know, like, hey, like I notice that you do this a lot, and that's and I'm punishing you because I I know that you're gonna do that every time. And this way, they one of two things happen: they get angry at you, and they're like, oh my gosh, Bez, like. Don't tell me how to play. Well, but hopefully you have like a good enough relationship. We're like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like, and then you guys can discuss different options, and then he picks different options, and then in turn you get to play with three plus two instead of two plus two every time. Yeah. Um. So, and one other thing that I want to I noticed is that you love to shield grab. Yeah, it's a force of habit from famous when. It, it, when it gets you wobbles, uh, you tend to rely on it. I've started moving... I, I can chain out of shields uh, pretty reliably, and I've started working in aerials out of shields. It's tricky, but finding the right times to do the right things. But I, I'm, I'm, I will do it every so often, but I'm trying to lean away. Like, even when shield grab is the best option, I'm trying to force myself into a position where I have to think about it, even for the, that split second and leaning away from relying on it. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome, because um, as you get better, right, like, bad players, most of their damage that you do to them will come from their own mistakes. But, like, when you have good players, like, the number of opportunities you get from them making a really bad mistake becomes smaller. So, like, you can be the ultimate scrub killer because it's like, oh, they can't L cancel? I'm just going to shield grab every time. You try doing that to a good player, and you're going to get destroyed. Yeah. So that's why, um, and that's good that you're proactive to do that, but that's just like a really important concept. Um, and so it's really good. So, you know, instead of shield grab, think of other options, or if you notice that you're doing the same thing over and over again, just try something else, see if it works or not. And if it's just, it, they're just friendly, so like there's no consequence to you losing, but it's more important that you learn. All right. So those are like my notes for today, and we're going to just go over your matches. Do you have any questions oh about the notes? Uh, no, easily following them, so I'm going to have them open on the other screen. Okay. Yeah. okay, these are different resolutions, so let me adjust the win viewing window. So I think you could see it, but the overlay isn't showing it properly, so I'm going to go ahead and just for future viewing purposes. Oh, whoops. Oh, no wonder why. This is, this is actually going to be very embarrassing. <laughs> it's okay. Le <laughs> I've made leaps and bounds since this point, so going back to this, I, I can't help but cringe when I look back at you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I totally understand. I can't, Sometimes when I, like, I watch my matches against like Lucky or SJ, I'm just like, oh, this is so painful. Um, but you could see everything, right? Yeah. So I'm not going to go, like, super nitty-gritty of, like, what you should do in every situation. Like, 
you can pot if you find something in particular you have a really big question about just say like hey like can we pause it and we can discuss but i'm just gonna go over themes yeah because like then i could because if we went the other way we could like time stamp it's like oh at two seconds you should have done this at three seconds why'd you do that but like you you already like i already know that like a lot of this is like tech mix up messes a lot of mess up in tech so like i don't need to like hamper you every second it's like oh like you suck i mean we're, we're learning um, let's see. I'm gonna try to see if I can lower the speed. I'm using VLC. Um, let's see. Wait, playback. Playback. Okay, speed. I want to do slower. Okay. Is it control minus? Is there like a speed that? Okay, I'm at point eight, which I think is good for now. If it's too fast, then we can. Go. Okay, turning off volume. Uh, I think it'd be slow enough on double speed, to be really honest, in hindsight. Okay, well, I'm not going to pause it too much. <laughs> Alright. Okay, another thing. Um... Get up attack all the time. <laughs> miss tech, get up attack, miss tech, get up attack. Okay, you already know. Um... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to practice this by on your own, but maybe you can do it, it, a save state on 20, 20xx, but I think practicing tech is also going to be really important. I forgot to mention that. Uh, I'll be brutally honest, it's been absent-mindedness. I've not been thinking about any defensive options. I've just not expected to get hit out of the hat. Got it. So, uh, I don't know, was that just, uh, you forgot to that... jump? Yeah, okay. more than lately. After all. Alright. Back here, thin air. So I like that you like to go for stage control, or like you have some intentionality. Oh no. Look at this rest punish. Yeah. Maximum damage. So one thing um, I mentioned, right, is uh, deliberation, right? So you need yeah. to... Yeah, walk slowly off top platform, walk slowly off. So the click is right, just to hold down, right, and just move. But I, um, I noticed that you had a really hard time getting there. Where you... I think you could have shot like five lasers and killed. Yeah, definitely. Oh, did you? Wow, that was amazing DI. Oh wait, this is PAL, right? Yeah. Okay, I was like wondering why. And you missed an L cancel there. Thanks, John. Wait, you know how to double laser? <laughs> <laughs> a, a side effect of playing play. Cancel's quite tricky. X because you need flash red which climber. So I used box to learn a short hop near. Uh, the fast wall just shuffling near and uh, out of curiosity I put a multi shine, double laser, all the stuff that doesn't matter but is fun to do. Okay, gotcha. I don't know how to do it. So once again, um gotta it's just like basic movement that didn't get you into the position fast enough. <laughs> Slub. So it's it's forgivable, but like I just want to point out that um, that we got to hit our spots faster, and that's something that we can practice, and it'll pay dividends really quick. It's like watching the home movies from ten years ago. <laughs> I can't help but wince and cringe at everything I've done. <laughs> it's all good. You teched, but you teched in. Yeah. <laughs> No. This guy really likes to... Uh, this guy really likes to... <laughs> rest. Yeah, to be fair, he has uh, rested Armada twice and Android once whilst we were at Kickstart in London, so... I can't really fault him. <laughs> yeah. I have never gone to rest on Armada. Sir. Uh... I'd like to assume it's because of the doubles chaos. 
but they lose a plane. Okay, this is going to be a little crazy. So if you land, um, and this could be something you can add to your notes of things to do, of habits. If you land with an aerial, and they're, and they don't have an active hitbox hitting you, I want you to delete shield from your vocabulary for now. Yeah. And I think of ways that you can outmaneuver, because Fox is like really fast at getting out. Is like think of ways you can outmaneuver whatever they're gonna throw out with good movement, as opposed to just defaulting to shield. Yeah, I, that's one of the things uh, I was thinking. A key thing from the notes that I want to work on is as soon as I land with an aerial, knowing exactly when I'm out of landing lag, uh, the frames even after L canceling, yeah, and going straight into dash, be it forward or dash back. Right. Or you can jump too, um, but there's many things you can do. You can even throw out another aerial. Yeah. That's what like Toph and other foxes do. It's tricky, but yeah. Um, for now, I'm not saying that you should never shield, but I think it would be good to think like, okay, like how can I, how can I like outmaneuver an attack just by good movement? Yeah. All right. Uh, and I guess <laughs> up throw up air is also a really strong thing you can practice too. Yeah, it's, I'm starting to get the timing for it now. I've been half Kirby, uh, Peach, a any floaty I can get my hands on in uh, training. I've been trying to figure out what percentages, what timings, using the shield and then buffer jump to get a hang of when I'm actionable. Hmm, okay. Uh... So those are like the things uh, that I've noticed from this match overall. Um, if we're just to sum it up, um, need to hit. I mean, we emphasize this in the slides. So just need to hit your spots quicker, shield less, and just practice like L cancel. And I think those are like the themes I noticed. Um, and do you have any questions in regards to this match, or is it just like too like cringe? Like, oh, like I don't want to like watch this. <laughs> I I'd rather pull the plaster off quickly than let it rip a hero at a time. So yeah. I, I... I get the gist of where it went wrong in almost every interaction, yeah. Okay, did you want to look over the Linny matches then? It's entirely up to yourself, whatever you think is uh, most beneficial. Alright, let me adjust the... This is just for the stream overlay. Okay, there we go. I remember correctly, Linny suicides quite a few times. Yeah. So... Well, if, so I like that you're moving a lot more, um, but also begin to think like what the purpose of your dash dance is, because it should be used. Um, there should be a reason behind it. So you hear you're kind of dash dancing for fun, like on the idea of like movement's good, but it seems like there's no yeah like, purpose for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we'll go should over be to dash space dance. moves. Yeah. So we'll go over um, the dash dancing like principles. Um, as like your movement gets better. <laughs> you shield dropping? Yeah. Attempting to Yeah. I should go decent shield dropping. I've only just started the L the aerial off the lower platforms, but that's just the two minutes in between uh practicing something that matters more. Mm, I see. Another shield grab. Yeah, it's bad. So you're a lot more mobile here, which is nice. Yeah, this is uh, at least a, a week after uh, the previous game, so I've had more time to play. Okay, gotcha. Rather than... Uh, Rather than my weak old fox, this is uh, Fortnite old. Oh, you missed an L cancel. <laughs> Another L <Yep>. cancel. <laughs> it, get, it feels good to get like, L cancels though, right? Yeah, definitely. Especially when it's uh, drill shine, well, late drill shine on shields. Uh, being rewarded for it. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're getting, you're getting stuck. 
But then on the flip side, it gets stuck. Um, it, it feels bad when like you get stuck and then you get hit because you're like, oh, I want to get out of here, and then you can't. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and a, a big part of it is knowing that you've messed up. So rather than get yourself out of your present situation, you're too busy trying to do what you just failed to do correctly. Yeah. I didn't wave dash out of my shield properly. Let's try that again. Instead of, I'm being grabbed right now. <laughs> is the reaction. Right on. So, uh, did you have any questions from this match? Other than the fact that I think you got forward smashed and got killed three times for no teching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it seems to be the, the running theme early matches is I need to be more conscious and present at all times rather than I'm in the middle of a combo string let's let my mind wander and think about how we're going to win you next exchange. I still have full control of my character to some extent I can DI, I can ASDI Flash DI there's so many different defensive options and you have to make those decisions really quick too. Oh, that was really cool. Yeah, it's, uh, running joke is the only tool I have in my arsenal is uh, shine spikes and armada shanks. <laughs> Alrighty. So, yeah, I don't really want to comment on like decision choices because a lot of it is just mainly like you got stuck in movement, and so like it's hard to say like oh like you made the wrong choice when you were stuck in movement and you wanted other things because like. And that's like the difficult thing. It's like, oh, like, did he really want to do that, or did he mess up? Is like the question that always looms in the back of my head. Yeah, no, uh, it's it's still quite early to be able to get anything like that of tournament matches. So it's concepts I'm thinking about. Try to think about the game as much as possible, and just from what we can see in those matches, I'm sure, it's obvious that. It's not getting any thought behind it was. Mm -hmm. It's if I hit him, I don't get hit in return. Then ultimately, I should win. Yeah. Rather than why am I nearing? Why am I running and shining when? You... There's no questions. There's no thought behind it. It's just a ball, hoping to get a hit. Right, and so those are like my thoughts. So. Uh, do you have any other questions? It, as far as uh, practice... Uh, Wait, you're going down. in and out. So, are you going away from your mic? Oh, sorry, my mistake. Okay. You were Everything all clear? Out. Oh, yeah, that's a lot better. So, as far as practice routines go, I've tried to implement uh, negative enforcement not sure if this is the best approach, but say for example, uh, what I was doing today was um, trying to get full length wave dashes. So I would try and do 10 in a row. Mm. If I was to mess up one, say I see the, the frame where Fox leaves the ground, I would then stop, wait 3 seconds, force the wait of 3 seconds, and then resume and try and get back up to 10. And then move from there on to dash dance it for two minutes and then go back to it and make sure that I can still do 10 in a row. Mm. So, so I don't know if there's any, any... Well, not more effective, but alternatives that yield better results. Um, I think as long as you're practicing like th um, certain things and it's a very modular, I think it's fine as long as you're doing it. Um, and for different people, like people are motivated very differently based on upbringing and just like what how they've learned in the past so i think that if it works for you i think that's great um, yeah just adjust it to learning style yeah um anything else Not off the top of my head okay so i'm thinking it would be good if we continued about like two weeks from now because if we go next week my worry is the fact that it's like oh yeah, your movement's not good. So I want to give you time to just, like, really, really, like, just practice movement. Because, like, that's, like, the thing that I want to hamper you on. And I don't want to waste your lesson just saying, oh, like, your movement's not good. Hey, your movement is still bad. Week six. It's uh, still bad movement. It's 
Yeah, no, I understand. Uh, it also means that we can get more matches uh, recorded further down the line and hopefully not as cringeworthy. Yeah. So, okay. And I think that's pretty much it for now. Um, and, of course, you know, if you have video updates, I'm more than happy to, you know, address them on... I guess we're talking on Twitter a lot if you have, like, matches. And I can suggest little things and it doesn't have to be a formal episode. And, like, it's just like, oh, like, you should practice this. And we can do that um, up until we meet again in, like, about two weeks. Cool. Alrighty. Well, cool. 